how do you invest in a crisis? When everything's falling apart, when fear is rampant, when stocks are falling and everything's falling apart in your world, what should you be doing? As an investor, as a value investor, as someone who's long-term orientated and focused on building their wealth over time, what should you be doing as an investor during these times of panic? Well, the simple answer is the same things you always do. And today we're going to be talking about that. We're going to be talking about investment strategies whilst the Dow is falling 500 points and the Nasdaq turns negative while these scary, scary things are happening. What you should be doing as an investor to make the most of this crisis. Of course, awful things happening, but awful things and awful times are often the best times to be an investor because they yield the most opportunity from a long-term perspective. So let's have a look. I want to think about, as a long-term investor, as someone who owns wonderful companies for the long-term, who isn't orientated on, on trading short-term, instead buying wonderful companies and holding for the long-term, seeing them grow and compound over time, how is that affecting my portfolio? Well, if you look year-to-date, Apple is one of the wonderful businesses that I interpret as a top, top quality company. Year-to-date, that's down 3.8%. Of course, this is influenced by a few factors. Of course, we've got the Fed raising rates, and thus anything with a growth hint, anything associated with growth is naturally getting pulled down a bit. But more so than anything recently, the key factor has been the crisis in Russia, Russia and Ukraine. The fear associated with that naturally pulling down stock prices. Now, when we take a long-term perspective, when we think about Apple's business, does a war in Ukraine really diminish the power of Apple that much? Does it really bring down the worth of Apple by 10.38% in the space of only a few months into the year? In fact, only two full months into the year? Is that justified? I don't believe so. I think when you look at the long-term prospects of a company such as Apple, such as companies such as Microsoft, such as Google, these large dominant companies that have been pulled down in price recently by this chaos, I don't think the selling is justified. And I think this is reflective of the key thing that investors should recognize in a time like this, and especially value investors should recognize in a time like this, that irrationality and fear in the marketplace provide some of the single best opportunities for a long-term investor. Let's have a look at Apple. Let's have a look at Apple's valuation if we come over here. And of course, looking at Apple on a value-centric basis, this is a top, top quality company. Financial strength, fantastic. Large degree of cash on hand relative to the debt. Well, not the best cash debt ratio, but of course that's offset by, by operational cash flows. An immense degree of profitability, a firmly entrenched company with a strong, strong brand image. These are products that consistently sell, and this company brings in a tremendous amount of free cash flow. Is this company really going to be 10%? Does this company really deserve to lose 10% of its value just because there's a war in a foreign country? And of course they're going to be selling less phones in Russia, less phones in Ukraine, less products sold in Europe more broadly if the war expands at all. But is that really that detrimental to the company? The vast majority of their sales are in the US, and they continue to grow at a rapid rate going forward, or a fairly stable rate in terms of their service growth, their their core product growth. This company is firmly entrenched, and going forward, over the long term, I don't see any real diminishment to Apple's potential growth by the conflict within Europe right now. And yet, the stock is down 10%. This is a fundamental lesson for investors, that when there is fear in the market, when there is blood in the streets, that is the time to buy. Apple's down 10%. If we run a DCF, if we look at the valuation on Apple, I think value-wise, we're even more undervalued. Look, a conservative growth rate of 14% going forward over the next 10 years, Apple appears fairly valued. And a more reasonable growth rate, I think a more growth rate closer to 17 18% going forward over the next decade, we justify for the company. So a growth rate of 17%, the company looks as much as 20% undervalued. Fear and irrationality in the marketplace is the best time at which to buy. I have a lot of people texting me, asking me, should I be buying right now? If the market goes down more, maybe is that a better time to buy? Should I wait? Should I get in? Should I stop? All these different questions when the only really thing you should be truly focusing on is the nature of the businesses you're buying. Do you know when Warren Buffett bought his first stock? The time at which Warren Buffett bought his first stock? It was just after Pearl Harbor. 1942, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that's the time he bought his first stock. The stock was City Services Preferred, an oil company. Now, if you think about the macroeconomic environment when Warren Buffett bought his first stock, Pearl Harbor had just happened. The US was at war. The world was at war. And the war of it wasn't going that well in the Pacific. Was Warren Buffett put off by the macroeconomic factors? Was he seeing war taking place and said, I'm not going to buy stocks right now. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait till they go down a bit more. No. Warren Buffett looked at the business. 
He saw the price, he saw the value, he saw what he was paying, and he saw what he was getting, and he bought a stock. I think that little boy, that little 11-year-old Warren Buffett, has a lot to teach us as investors. That we should not be so caught up in the macro. We should not be so caught up in what is going on around the world, and instead, we should focus on the quality of what we're buying. The price we're paying, and the value we're getting. That's the fundamental basis of value investing. I think it's the fundamental basis of long-term investing. And it's the fundamental basis of successful investing over the long term. Getting caught up in the short-term fluctuations of the market. Getting caught up in macroeconomic events. These aren't the formula for long-term success. They're the formula for market out underperformance. Now, people say it's so hard to, to outperform the market. It's impossible to outperform the market that almost every hedge fund has failed to do so for the past decade. I don't think outperforming the market is that complicated. But I think when you involve emotions and you involve, and you involve an over-awareness of macroeconomic events, when you're focused too much on day-to-day -day ups and downs and the, the world that's going on around you, that detracts from your potential for success in the market. I think if you focus on a few wonderful companies, companies within your circle of competence, wonderful, wonderful businesses trading at a fair price, or even better, a slight discount to their intrinsic value, but not getting caught up in buying cheap stocks, buy better businesses at fair prices, that's what I say, buy wonderful businesses at fair prices, that is the formula for long-term success. Find a few wonderful companies, companies like Apple, companies like Google, these firmly entrenched, strong businesses, and you hold them over the long term. Over the past 10 years, Apple is up over 738.51%. Massive, massive returns. If we compare that relative to the S&P, relative to the S&P, if we go back here and we have a look at, let's have a look at ticker symbol SPY, see what that's returned over the past five years or so. Over the past five years, S&P 500 is up over 81.68%. And over the past five years, Apple is up over 366.73%. Now, was it so hard to predict back in 2017 that Apple would likely continue growing at a steady rate going forward? The iPhone was already out. The vast majority of their product lines were already released and the service business had started to expand, albeit slowly, at that time. Was it so hard to foresee that this quality, quality company will continue to do what it's been doing for the past decades? Was that so difficult a calculation? I don't believe so. But I believe what is difficult is trying to ignore the macroeconomic factors out during 2017. Every single year there's something happening. Something bad happens all the time. It's going to keep happening. It's always happened. And it will continue to happen. But that should not deter us as investors. What we should be focused on is the quality of the businesses we buy and not the macroeconomic environment, macroeconomic environment surrounding that company. And that's the difference. That's the difference between the market, 81.68% in five years, and 366.73% in five years. That simple belief that I own a wonderful company. This is my business. It's not a stock. It's not a little ticker that moves up and down, up and down. It is a business and I own the business. Adhering to that philosophy, and staying away from this notion of, well, you know, what was erupting, we, we need to sell the stocks, we need to buy the stocks, just hold the business. Act as what you are as an investor, a business owner. Because that's what an investor is. You own part of a business, and if investors adopted that mentality, that long-term oriented, value-centric mentality, then I think over the long term, investors would find far more success relative to both the market and their historical performance. This all comes back to the concept of Mr. Market. That Mr. Market is an irrational thing. Mr. Market is an irrational man who will offer you outrageous prices at times, well, well below what something is worth, and also at times, well, well above what something is worth. And although, and I, I, I realize many of you aren't business owners, so I understand that, but a lot of you can understand the concept of owning a home. And this is something Warren Buffett talks about a lot. If a man was to come to your home, and you've bought a home for, say, a million dollars, and he was to offer you $500,000 for your home, would you sell your home? The answer for 99.9% .9 of people would be no, because you know what your house is worth. You know what what you've bought is worth, and so you're not going to sell it for anything less than it's worth. And yet when the market gyrates, when things go down, when prices move, when in the space of a month the stock goes down 6.76%, you say, oh, my stock is worth less now. I need to sell it at this lower price. No, you don't. No, you don't. You can hold. You can wait as long as you want within the market if you know the worth of what you own. 
It's almost like a superpower in investing. If you know how much your stock is worth, then you don't have to sell. You can hold, you can wait for that value to be realized, and you can also realize that going into the future, your stock may be worth even more. And so you can hold for long term and get those fantastic gains over time. On the other hand, if, if Mr. Market came to your house and he said, I'll pay you $3.5 million for your million dollar home, what would you do? I think a large portion of you, if you weren't so strongly emotionally tied to that house, would likely sell the house. Selling at a massive, massive premium to what it's worth. And that's why in times of euphoria, when you're offered massive, massive increases in price for your stock, that's when it's the time to sell. Not the time to hold on, not the time to become euphoria and buy into this, this ir irrational exuberance that spreads throughout the market. That's the time at which to sell. The time at which to sell during a crisis is not now a crisis. When prices are depressed, when most of the market is offering, that, offering you that lower price for the house, you should buy more of your own house. If that's such a possible thing to do. That's what I'd be doing. When prices go down, when chaos is rampant, when bad things are happening, that is the time to act. And I believe investors adhere to that. I believe they, they bought into that notion of acting when everyone else is freaking out. When everyone is scared, being calm, being collected, and acting well, buying wonderful businesses like Apple. Buying them at a discount to their intrinsic value. Over the long term, that yields more success than any other strategy I could possibly think of. And all you need to do, and all you need to do to discover that is go back and look at the historical performance of the world's greatest investors. Look at what Warren Buffett was doing to, during 2008. When everyone was selling their stocks rapidly, what was he doing? He was buying stocks. He was buying businesses at a discount to their intrinsic value because he knows how much they're worth. So as, as a playbook to investing in a crisis, how to invest in a crisis, how to invest both with this Russia-Ukraine situation and any crisis that may perpetuate in the future, is a few simple things. Number one, know what your business is worth. Know what you're buying, know how much it's worth, and know what a fair price to pay is, and if you're underpaying it or you're overpaying it. Buy businesses below their intrinsic value, and approach them with a long-term perspective. Not as a trader, but as an investor. As someone who owns a business. For the long term, not for the short term. And wants to see that business succeed or going forward into the foreseeable future. Don't get caught up in macro. Warren Buffett bought his first stock during World War II. Not the best macroeconomic conditions, but still he bought it, and over time, that investment succeeded. He sold it actually a little too early. So hold, hold for the long term too, that's another, another key, key idea. These fundamental beliefs, these fundamental values of investing, these are the things that should guide us through market turmoil. Reading the news too much, reading the massive declines in the stock price, or the massive declines in the market, that we're in a, in, entering into a bear market, just be calm, be relaxed, Buy wonderful businesses at fair prices. Hold them for the long term. Don't get caught up in market gyrations. And over the long term, I believe you can succeed. I believe you can even outperform the market. Which may seem like an absurd thing with so much speculation about not being able to outperform the market. I think over the long term, if you adhere to these values, that's exactly what you can do. So if you enjoyed this video, if you learned something more about how to invest in a crisis, then please drop us a like down below. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. If there's a company or a topic you want to talk about in the next video, then please just comment down below and I'll see if I can get onto it. But until then, thank you. I'll see you in the next one.